HMS Queen Elizabeth was the lead ship of a class of five super dreadnought battleships laid down and built prior to the outbreak of the First World War. She was stated to be the world's first fast battleship, however sometimes that can be called into conjecture based on the source. Queen Elizabeth would be ordered from Portsmouth Dockyard, at the time His Majesty's Dockyard Portsmouth, with a price tag of £3 million, or in today's money, that is £366,829,901.37p, or the equivalent of four QE class battleships could buy you a single Type 45 destroyer. Her keel was laid on the 21st of October 1912, where she would spend some 359 days on the slipway, before sliding into Portsmouth Harbour from slipway number 5. The same slipway, HMS Iron Duke, Jellicoe's flagship, was built. She was structurally complete by January 1914, and proceeded on sea trials before returning to port before she was commissioned into the fleet on December 22nd, 1914, as the first ship bear the name Queen Elizabeth, after Queen Elizabeth I. By the time Queen Elizabeth was commissioned, World War I, or at the time it was known as the Great War, had been raging for about five months, and she'd be sent towards the Mediterranean to undergo further sea trials, whilst also being ordered to head to the Dardanelles, to assist with the bombardment of Ottoman positions whilst assuming the role as flagship. This bombardment would progress well, with reports stating she sank a Ottoman transport, and that the bombardment was even going to break the Ottoman lines. However, it was seen that after the sinking of the pre-dreadnought battleship, HMS Goliath, by an Ottoman destroyer, the anti-torpedo boat guns encasements didn't really prove well, and she and other heavy allied units would be withdrawn from the operational area. But after these movements, she would be recalled home after her turbine had a major defect, resulting in a couple of weeks of repair. By 1916, she would enrol into the Grand Fleet as part of the 5th Battle Squadron under Admiral Hugh Evan Thomas, based out of Scarpa Flow. However, she would rotate with her sisters for refits or as part of the Battle Fleet conducting gunnery training, and this rotation, it would fall on her refit period that the Battle of Jutland would happen, and as a result, she was in harbour when her sisters were getting hammered by the High Seas Fleet. However, she would return to service after the battle, whilst War Spies was being repaired, as she was the worst hit. For the rest of the war, she would go on in and out of refits, whilst also integrating into the battle fleet, and then unrolling herself and getting back into a refit period, until 1918, when she would be the ship that the German surrender of the High Seas Fleet would take place. After the war concluded, she would be enrolled into the Atlantic Fleet for her tenure until 1925, where she would change to the Mediterranean Fleet, before going into a major refit. During her 1926-27 refit, she would have the funnels trunk together to create a large, single uptake, new 4-inch anti-aircraft guns would replace the 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, her wide turret flying off platform would be removed, and the most radical change would come in the addition of large torpedo bulges. Post-refit, she would conduct a post-refit sea trial to see how this refit really affected the ship, and would only really affect the ship's speed due to the addition in beam because of the torpedo bulges. However, based off this, she would continue her career with the home fleet until 1929, when she would be deployed to the Mediterranean until 1936 for a large, major refit. But this intervening time, she would conduct an interfleet redeployment, and it would see the Queen Elizabeth conduct a fleet cruise and training periods broken up every two years or so by a refit, usually seeing minor repairs and modifications, like the addition of a fire control system for the anti-aircraft guns. This would see the high angle director added atop of the foretop, and later, on another refit, the flying off position was removed from B turret. Post these refits, she would return to operation with the Mediterranean fleet, where she would take part in a neutrality patrol and blockade during the Spanish Civil War, but wouldn't fire her guns at any targets. Post neutrality patrol, she would be paid off for refit in the UK, where she would undertake a major modernisation period in Portsmouth Dockyard. Now, 
The refit period that Queen Elizabeth would undertake in 1937 would be rather major, and she'd be handed over to the Portsmouth Dockyard on August 11th for this major work. She entered the Three Basin and into Dry Dock for a refit, and under this refit, her machinery plant was majorly redesigned and reworked, resulting in the existing 25 boilers being replaced by 8 high-pressure boilers, saving about 50% in existing weight of the plant and reducing it by a third in size. In addition, new turbines were added and the whole superstructure was rebuilt, with a new bridge structure, hangars for spotter planes, cross-deck catapult, new masts, and a new, thinner funnel. The main turret elevation was increased, and it would add about 8,000 yards to the ship's main battery gun range. A new fire control table was added, replacing the old one with a new Admiralty fire control table Mark 7. The ship's secondary mounts would be replaced by twin 4.5 inch frying pan dual purpose mounts. Anti aircraft protection was bolstered by an addition of four octuple pom pom 2 pounder mounts located around the midship section, in addition to 50 caliber machine guns being mounted atop of B and X turret. To help out with the anti-aircraft direction, to help out with the anti-aircraft direction, to help out with anti-aircraft direction, the addition of the HAX-4 or the High Angle Control System Mark IV Director was added atop of the bridge structure. The final major modification would be the addition of thicker armour over the magazines and the machinery plant. She would emerge from Portsmouth Dockyards in December 1940 to finish her refit in Rosyth due to the risk of German bombers attacking her during the air raids on Portsmouth. She would put to sea for a transit to Rosyth via the Celtic Sea, round the top of Scotland and into Rosyth Dockyard, essentially the long way around. But technically, this was chosen to do with basically taking her away from Nazi Germany. She was temporarily recommissioned on the 10th of December and sailed the next day alongside the destroyers Jupiter, Kashmir, Kipling and Punjabi. They left Portsmouth Harbour and turned right at the Isle of Wight, and they would receive a spotting signal of a U-boat off the North Cornish coast. As Queen Elizabeth was a high-value unit, she and her small escort force would put into Devonport for 24 hours before going back to sea to finish her high-speed three-day straight transit to Rosyth. The refit period continued through the first month of 1941, where she had the Type 279 long range radar and the Type 284 main armoured and spotting radar installed. With the basin trials being conducted in the latter half of the month and into the mid half of February, her wartime career would now begin when she sailed on the 20th of February for Scarpa Flow alongside the cruiser Dido and three destroyers. The next day she would join the home fleet and the following day she would conduct a high speed trial to see actually how fast she could go. But a major defect would emerge with the two turbines and she would obviously fail due to the fact that they found some foreign objects inside the casings of the turbines which was not from a bunch of matlows. These were found to have been put by people who actually built the turbines because the units were sealed prior to leaving the Fairfield factory for delivery, Kiwi was not the only ship to have some sort of foreign object debris inside her turbines. Kiwi had a nut and also a file found in her turbine. Suffolk, a heavy cruiser, found that she also had foreign debris in her turbines too, and the commander-in-chief of the home fleet decided that possible sabotage was at play. Kiwi would have her turbines repaired from the 1st to the 13th of March, and she would be signalled by the commander-in-chief of the home fleet that she was to be a heavy escort for a convoy bound to sail from Halifax on the 10th of April due to the presence of Kriegsmarine battleships, the Scharnhorst and the Neisenor, operating in the North Atlantic during Operation Berlin. The following day, she recommenced her high-speed trial, for which she passed and she would then return to working up for operations. The 15th of March, she would receive a distress signal from a tanker, the San Casimo. She was being attacked by the Nisenau, and over the next couple of days, the two sisters would capture 12 ships and sink a further three. Whilst this is going on, Kiwi would actually conduct a large caliber gun shoot with her main guns. Over the next couple of days, 
she would receive signals from the Commander-in-Chief of the Home Fleet, with orders to sail to counter a possible retreat of the Scharnhorsts back through the Denmark Strait, and to counter a possibility that Bismarck might be there to escort them home, as she was missing from imagery. Queen Elizabeth would then sail on the 19th in company with a cruiser and destroyer escort, along with Hood joining about an hour and a half later, bound for an RV point with HMS Nelson and her escort. However, all they would find was open sea and no Nazi warships. The task group would end up sailing home after they received signals and intelligence that the two Scharnhorsts were in fact approaching Brest, and not the Denmark Strait, and as such, they would sail home, arriving on the 23rd into Scarpa Flow, where the Commander-in-Chief of the Home Fleet, Admiral Tovey, would transfer his flag from the Nelson to the Queen Elizabeth. But this wouldn't last, as Admiral Tovey changed his flag to the King George V on the 1st of the month. On the 2nd of April, it would see the Queen Elizabeth sail for Halifax to escort the convoy TC-10, but based off six German destroyers heading down the English Channel, it was an idea that Queen Elizabeth was to turn south just in case the German battleships decided to sail home. However, our good friends in the RAF decided to sort the Nizer now out completely and shoved a torpedo into her bow, then followed on by a couple of bombs, and she really wasn't going anywhere. With this information, QE would head for Gibraltar to refuel, before heading out for the Strait of Gibraltar for Freetown and then back to Gibraltar. May would see the Queen Elizabeth assigned to the Mediterranean fleet, based out of Alexandria in Egypt, and so she would run as a heavy convoy escort, or heavy escort, in the Mediterranean. Arriving in Alexandria, alongside three of her sisters, the Warspite, Malaya and Valiant. Through the rest of the month, she joined up with her sisters, in addition to Barham, on various small operations and patrols in the eastern Mediterranean, countering Axis operations, in addition to supporting the evacuation of Crete. For the rest of the year, she would patrol off Syria, act as a diversionary unit for convoys, and she would spend periods of a couple of weeks in Alexandria. In December, alongside the battleship Valiant, she was attacked by Italian frogmen, who attached explosives to the bottom of the hull which detonated, and the ships slowly started to fill with water. But she wouldn't ground on the harbour bottom. Nine crew members were unfortunately lost in the Queen Elizabeth due to the explosion. The resulting damage caused flooding in three of the boiler rooms, and the rough guess is the explosion happened between frames 109 and 136. Due to her having an increased draft, the ship could not be brought alongside, so a salvage team would be sent to try and get the ship more buoyant enough to be brought alongside to get them into a state where they could sail for repairs. For Queen Elizabeth, this would take from January to May of 1942, and this would be to get the ship buoyant enough to start patching the holes and for the ship to be in enough of a state to conduct a cross-ocean transit. In June, she was brought alongside the harbour where she was basically repaired, but with the Nazi advance, all work went into getting the Queen Elizabeth ready to set sail in which she sailed on the 27th bound for the Suez Canal. She would make the transit from Port Said to Norfolk Navy Yard in America, and this would take up to about two and a half months before she sailed into Norfolk, Virginia on the 6th of September to undergo the refit. She'd be paid off on the 8th, and so too, the refit and repair would start. Her repair would take about 10 months to complete, in which she conducted her basin trial on the 1st of June 1943 and would sail for war on the 26th. Her first port of call would be Plymouth, where she'd be refitted with high frequency direction finding equipment, or Huff Duff, and the aviation facilities would also be removed as she was prepping for service with the Eastern Fleet. She would work up for the rest of the year, with periods in Portsmouth for some repairs, before returning back to Scarpa Flow. She would return to war on the 30th of December 1943, where she sailed into the Mediterranean and then onto the Indian Ocean and to the Pacific. She would take part in the bombardment of Sabang in Sumatra, and then on to operations near Burma, for which she gained two battle stars. She was involved in the slow steamrolling of the Allied advance on the Japanese Empire until July of 1945, when she was brought back home and placed into reserve in August in Rosyth, where she became an accommodation ship. 
but she was assigned to the home fleet post VJ Day, or Victory Over Japan Day, and by December was based out of Portland, until HMS Howe relieved her. She was placed into reserve for a second time, but technically still in commission. She was basically in a secondary role. She remained in Portsmouth until January 1948, when she was sold for scrap. She was paid off in mid-1948 and taken on tow to Scotland for scrapping. Her career would see her serve 30-odd years, gaining five battle stars, being the Dardanelles in 1915, Crete in 1941, Sabang in 1944, Burma in 1944-45, and the East Indies in 1945. Her name would be given to a class of two aircraft carriers designed in the 1960s as the CVA-01 class, but these would be cancelled later on. Later in the 20th century and moving into the 21st century, the name Queen Elizabeth would again grace a Royal Navy vessel. This time, HMS Queen Elizabeth would be the lead ship of a Queen Elizabeth class of aircraft carrier, and they are currently in service. The new Queen Elizabeth is the flagship of the Royal Navy and carries over her predecessor's battle honours. And as of 2021, during Op Fortis, she sails near Crete, Sabang, not Burma, and through to the East Indies, commemorating her name's past battle honours. <laughs> 